privileged in the mystery as the foster dad of Jesus, humble, calm, and pure, guardian of his son, husband of the Virgin Mary, chosen by the Trinity. Of holy family, loving Saint Joseph, protector of Mary, you obeyed without a complaint, patron of the church. I'm standing here in Saint Peter's Church on the sanctuary, next to this very fine statue which was loaned to us by uh, a parishioner, Romilly, and you see that Joseph is holding the child Jesus. And at this time of year, in the middle of February, we still look back at the, at the crib, which was uh, just to my left here in the church. And when we were contemplating the crib, Joseph, as always, is that person who is given the grace of being calm and serene with uh, Mary, but at the same time, he is the one who went through a tumult of emotions uh, in order to, to accept the fact that Mary was going to have a child of which he was not the natural father. And St. Matthew is almost embarrassed in the way that he speaks about uh, the trial that Joseph has had. So Joseph is a man who can teach us so much. He's a saint for a life of chastity, a life of patience, a life of putting everything, everything in his life into God's hands in order to make sense of it, he puts it into God's hands and says that he accepts its inscrutability. And he lives with that willingly, so that he becomes a man of anxiety and very, uh, very difficult emotions until he has the message from God which says, really, give it all over to me. Joseph does that. Pope Francis has chosen the year of Joseph, has chosen him as our particular model this year, and it's been a, such a difficult year. So many families have known personal emotion, difficulties, trials. So many have touched um, unexpected death. And we now hear that our young people are suffering from the lockdown. Again, a young person's emotional trauma that some of our young people have committed suicide. So why do I turn to Joseph with you at this moment? Because he is one who doesn't understand anything and doesn't ask for the clarification only that he accepts that God is the one who will show him the way, what to do. Coming to Bethlehem, finding somewhere to live, and then at the risk of uh, being overcome by the forces of Herod, taking the child and Mary, fleeing into Egypt. He is not the lead in the story, but he is tranquil in being the, the cooperator always of Mary and her mysterious message to the world. So holding the child Jesus, as Simeon had said to him, this child is destined for the fall and for the rising of many, and then talked about Mary's own soul will be pierced. Goodness knows that both of them together had so much to 
hand over to God. This weekend, we just have a moment to say, this weekend we are celebrating the feast of the Rosminian family, when Rosmini saw God's plan and he went up to this this half-destroyed monastery up in Domodossola in North Italy. So he began his mission waiting for his companion. He began his mission in Lent and began putting together the constitutions of the Institute of Charity. He started the Rosminian family. So we celebrate the beginnings of our Rosminian Institute this weekend. We're entering into Lent. Again, it's a time of quiet and a time of assessment of our own lives so that we too can follow the steps of Joseph. Receive the grace he wants to pour into our heart so that we can hand over our future to the Lord and depend on his divine providence. So thank you for these moments of attention and I hope that you will uh, enjoy this weekend as Rosminians, the Feast of the Cell, and also uh, entering into Lent and wondering what the challenges are going to be for us so that we live lives of true discipleship. Spend each day in your grace You were privileged in the mystery As the foster dad of Jesus Humble, calm and pure Guardian of his son Husband of the 